an on-bike punch-up in the Kratum de Dauphiné today with Milano set to enjoy some time on the sidelines, I would think, after assaulting Hugo Page. This was stage six of the Dauphiné. Apart from the TT, five of the five stages have been these uh, missed climbing sprinty boy stages. They could go to the break, they could go to the bunch if the teams are motivated enough, and today the teams just weren't that motivated. Well, Jumbo Visma certainly weren't. And it was a six-man break that went with five Frenchmen and one Italian, Andrea Bagioli, the odd one out. But a strong break with Roland, Lafay, Bouchard, Bagui, and, I mean, does Jasper Sturvin have something over his DS? He's got the team to pay for him all week. I think he's come. His best is six so far in a sprint. It ain't happening. Trek were pacing for a little bit. Yumbo taking it easy behind them. And Chris Froome, maybe I spoke too soon on the Lantern Rouge Cycling podcast the other day, which you should check out. About Chris Froome's resurgence, he was dropped on this 9k 4.5% climb. Into Marche helping out as well for Hugo Page, who's in the points jersey. Uh, I think he's borrowing that from Wout van Aert. And the break, it was working reasonably well together. 2 minutes 50, Warren Bargui just increasing the pace here. He was the closest on GC, maybe he was trying to borrow a trick from his compatriot's playbook. Guillaume Martin backed all some GC games from the break, and here's one of our, well, our victim today, Hugo Page, young 20-year-old French uh, sort of resistant uh, fit sprinter on Intermarche, good prospect, good rider. Trek kept pacing, but this this break ain't coming back, even when Bora Hansgrohe start helping. And I get it. Like, they haven't got anything out of this race, Bora. they got walls here. Total keep doing well in these French World Tour races, the biggest ones. Earlier in the week, they won a stage with Viermoz. They won with Bergado and Paranese, and now Ferron. Maybe it's something to do with the equipment Sagan brought over with him. They're doing pretty well in these top races, better than in previous years, and they're pretty good in the classics too. Eventually, UAE also started helping. They haven't got anything out of the race, and obviously Bex, we've spoken enough about that. They haven't either. So we're getting into the final 13Ks, a fast run-in with some descents, a little quick uphill as well, just like all the other days, which make a two-minute lead way too big to bring back. Like They struggled to bring back 30 seconds yesterday on stage two, and so Yumbo were just in controlling mode, and here we get into the reason why you clicked on the video. Here at the bottom of the screen, you see Milano on the left and Hugo Page on the right, and Page is just going to go slightly to the left of the direction of the way the peloton is moving, curving to the right. He's following the two Intermarche riders ahead of him, and Milano feels like he cut him up. Milano feels like he went in front of him and pushed him wide, and he didn't endanger him. Like They're going fast on a descent, I get it, but Milano just went with him, and he's not happy about it. So he's going to grab first, and this is the thing I think is almost the most dangerous. He grabs the saddle of page and not just like grabs he like gives it a proper push i think the saddle or or the his bike frame is like wobbling hugo page and they're going like 70 k's plus an hour so that already that's dq worthy in my book you can't do that can't take your hands off and and be moving a guy's bike around that's so sketchy then he gets up in his face one first attempted smack kind of misses airballs that one and then he's going to go in for round two i think page was being like i don't know what your problem is buddy he wasn't backing down and then he slaps him, he like smacks him on the side of the head, which takes Paige completely by surprise. And if you watch his front wheel really closely, he nearly chops himself onto Conrad's back wheel, reacting to that. I could have brought down four riders, five riders. You go down at this speed, you can end your career. You don't know how it'll end up. The other UAE guys like, calm down, Milano. Paige is giving him the finger wag. I love this. No, no, no. You can't do that. And, yeah, just a disgusting, cowardly act from Milano. Like, what's Paige supposed to do? Why are you having a fight on the bike? And this is the bet. Paige cuts him up again. <laughs> and then Milano raises his hand. Like, you got to be kidding me. He goes to his teammate. Like, look what this guy's doing to me. He's making a fool of me. After the race, Milano said to Daniel Free with the cycling podcast, oh, it's not the first time I've had problems with this guy. I'm sorry, but I've had it up to here with him. And Paige is a young guy, so obviously... Milano would never do this to a veteran because he's probably a bit of a coward. So, and then afterwards, after he got disqualified, obviously, he said, I apologize, it's dangerous, yada, yada, yada. So, a bit of a shame. Milano should probably be suspended for the rest of the year. Really dangerous actions. And if he hasn't signed a contract for next year, he's out of contract. That's going to make it pretty difficult for him to get a contract, or at least the one he might have been expecting. But back to the breakaway, all looking good for them. Michael Storer, I haven't checked the news or Twitter or anything, but if he's not sick, then this clearly looks like he's deliberately losing more time so he can go on the breakaway comfortably for the first big mountain stage tomorrow. And as I said, the break was working reasonably well. They only had 120. They couldn't begin dilly-dallying at this point, and it was actually Harry Sweeney, I think, who tried to attack from the peloton, but 113. 
13 to 6 chase to go. He's not closing that back. Although we do see here Warren Buggy the first time, riders skipping turns. Buggy pushes Lefay through. Roland then, 500 meters later, he's like, nah, no more turns from me. Let's Bouchard's wheel go. He's not going to pull through because they got a comfortable gap. And Bouchard, he attacked on this last little rise right from the front. Like, no element of surprise. Bagioli, note that. Quick stepper, the Italian getting worked. He was on the front closing that down, and he did so pretty easily. So Jumbo Visma basically just keeping their units safe going into the 3Ks or so. To go, they're not trying to bring this back like in other days. 40 seconds, 7 seconds is too much. And Valentin Ferron goes with a K to go under the Flamme Rouge, and note Bargui doesn't close him. Andrea Bagioli is the man, again, the young Italian on quick step, who probably, ooh, in good form, has the best sprint of this group, although Wawa is pretty fast as well. He's closing him down, and then he's like, no. Nope. Starts freewheeling, and here is the win for Ferron, guaranteed. The four other French riders are not going to close him or don't want to ruin their own race, and now that the gap is at 50 metres, no one is bringing back a surging Ferron. So... Total won with the sprint with Viermos, with a late move by Bergado, and now with this 1k dash by Valentin Ferrand with Pierre Roland going for the sprint on the barriers. I think he came second with Bargui third, who Bargui actually won GP in Durham with a good sprint. But Milano, he drafted Page before this, and then he swerved across the entire half the width of the road in this sprint for, I don't know, the minor places for seventh. So... Wild didn't contest it. If he wants to go for green, he'll obviously have to contest every sprint to the max. But Ferron wins another huge win for Total Energy. <laughs> they probably can't believe how good their Dauphiné is going. Wild keeps the yellow jersey a minute three ahead of Catania and one of six ahead of his team at Rollis. Tomorrow's big mount stage will be interesting to see how Yumbo go with Wout. Will he even try to keep the jersey tomorrow? Or will he just be focused on 100% domestic duties? I'm looking forward to watching that stage. We're pretty tied up today, but I'll see you with the recap of that tomorrow. Ciao.